Hello and welcome to the Drive Formula podcast using trust, communication, and action to accelerate your team from zero to 60. This is Marcus Williams. Welcome to episode one of our podcast. And today we are actually going to dive into our book, Driving Engagement. So if you haven't purchased the book, it is available for purchase on Amazon or other online retailers. You can get it as an ebook or as a paper book. One of the things we are going to do in this podcast podcast is actually read the book to you. So in a sense, it'll be a deep dive audiobook. And what I mean by that is we will read the text of the book, but then in further episodes, we will dive into the chapters, our ideas, our stories, what we meant, what we were thinking, how the drive formula came to be. And we will also answer your questions. So don't forget to subscribe, submit your comments and questions in the comments below, or you can send them to the drive formula at gmail.com. Another thing we'd like to do is have guest speakers. Those of you who've had leadership experience or experience with leaders that you believe relate to the topics that we discuss in the book, um, let us know. We'd love to talk with you on the podcast and work through some real life situations. So to get started with episode one, hopefully you already have the book. If not, go ahead and order it so that you can mark it up, write down your questions, highlight points that uh, you want to integrate or use in your professional life. And we will get started with the preface. One of our primary motivations for writing this book was our desire to help new leaders understand how they can maximize the productivity and effectiveness of their employees by increasing engagement and supporting mental health. As a leader, we want you to think back to your first leadership position and how you felt as you transitioned from employee to leader. What did you want to accomplish? What did you hope to change or improve? Ultimately, Did you feel like communication with your leaders was effective? And if not, would improved communication have helped your transition into leadership? We are very excited for this book and believe the principles contained herein will resonate with you as we compare business leadership to something you probably use every day, cars. After reading this book, every time you sit down in a car or walk through a parking lot, you will think of the leadership principles you learned in these pages. We enjoyed many animated discussions and brainstorming sessions as we built the chapters of this book. As we discussed how to best broach the topic, we went down many rabbit holes comparing everything from tie rod ends, brakes, and wiring harnesses to business positions and structure. Ultimately, for the sake of simplicity and the highest impact, we will use two different metaphors throughout the book. Number one, employee as driver. Each employee drives their own career. Those who work for or with them help keep their car, career, running. Number two, leader as driver. Closely related to the first metaphor, each leader drives their own division, conscientiously listening to every part of the car, their various employees, to keep their division running at peak performance. In each scenario, the business owner supplies the vehicle, which which is important to note because the choice of vehicle is of paramount importance. More on that later. As a leader, you are driving your own car or career, but also driving the division you oversee. Life suddenly got complicated as you assumed leadership responsibilities, but never fear. The lessons you have learned from driving your employee car will help you become king or queen of the road on your fabulous road trip to leadership success. Chapter 1. Getting Behind the Wheel There I was, traffic whizzing by, broken down on the side of the road. My whole day was shot. Does that sentence conjure up any memories for you? Maybe memories you would rather forget. How about this one? It was a typical crazy Monday morning. I was running late, as usual, 
and was mentally rescheduling my day when I sat in the car and turned the key to nothing. The car simply refused to start. For all of us who just expect that when we turn the key, our car will start and take us where we need to go, car trouble can be a great cause for anxiety. We know we have to feed the car gas and get the oil changed whenever the dashboard computer tells us it's time, but otherwise, it is supposed to just work. Just the thought of having to take our car to the shop for a few days to say nothing of ast astronomical repair bills can be the source of massive anxiety and financial stress. You may, like many people, trade in your car every few years just to avoid this anxiety. You would rather have a perpetual car payment than have the thingamawatsit go out on you at the worst possible time. Where else will you find the same type of anxiety? What else in your life do you wish just worked? Your job? Your team? And why does it always seem to break down at the worst possible moment? Like when you have a looming deadline or when you're about to launch a new product. As a leader, you are responsible for yourself, your employees, and your team's production. With so many moving parts, it's no wonder so many leaders get stuck. The world is changing. We are experiencing a massive paradigm shift in the workforce, arguably one as big as the Industrial Revolution. It's time to think differently. Employees are no longer willing to put up with a crappy job just so they can collect their pension in 40 years. Employees no longer feel loyalty to their employer or gratitude to them for providing a job. Employees no longer grin and bear it. Your people, the workforce of America, are demanding something better. Lost resources. So far in this massive shift, things aren't getting better. According to Gallup, in 2022, only 34% of workers were engaged in their jobs. A full 16% were actively disengaged. Think about that. Only around two-thirds of your workforce is even minimally engaged at work. Think of the lost resources represented in those two numbers. You, as a business leader, are essentially driving a car that is firing on only one cylinder. You are paying salaries, benefits, 401k contributions, facilities costs, and more to people who don't even want to be there. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics lists current employee tenure at an average of only 4.6 years. On top of that, it costs an employer about one-third of the employee's salary when they leave. Between lack of engagement and high turnover, employees are costing American businesses billions of dollars every year. This begs the question, why do we continue to pay two-thirds of our employees to sit at work, unengaged and unmotivated? We are giving money away, like filling up the gas tank and then letting the car idle in the driveway all night. Do you believe your unengaged workers are happy? That they somehow believe that they are pulling the wool over your eyes, sticking it to the man? Of course not. Levels of anxiety and depression are through the roof in our society. People want to enjoy their work. After all, we spend the majority of our life at work. We went to school for a career we thought we would love. We followed our passion, and our passion turned into the cause of our depression. What went wrong? Employees are facing increased demand and expectation more than ever before. There is no off switch. We no longer live in a world where you punch a clock after your eight-hour shift and not think about work again until morning, especially not in the gig and service economies. Our employers expect us to be available at any time, day or night. We are constantly connected. No work today, I promise, I told my wife as I carried our daughter's birthday cake out to the patio. I lit the candles and everyone gathered to sing happy birthday. Just as she leaned over to blow out her five candles, my phone buzzed. 
My wife looked over at me and gave me that look. You know the one. It buzzed again. I shrugged and took the phone out of my pocket, just as I feared it was my boss. I know it's your daughter's birthday, but we just got a call from our client. I'm going to need you to get that proposal done today. Sorry. I sighed and returned the phone to my pocket. This kept happening. For every time my employee promised family comes first, I can name a time they have disrupted a birthday or vacation. But what could I do? My wife followed me back into the kitchen. Don't you dare, she hissed. Not again. You promised her. I'm sorry, honey. What can I do? Quit? We have a mortgage. If you go to work today, you can take a suitcase and sleep at the office, she declared. But no, she finished, turning abruptly to return to the party. Ring any bells? And we wonder why our employees are unhappy and unengaged. Employees with a good work-life balance are 10% more likely to stay at their companies. When productivity is down or turnover is high, it is time to pay attention. The check engine light is glaring us right in the face. It is time to pull over and diagnose the problem before it's too late. Missing resources. One word, communication. How much are we missing due to poor or dysfunctional communication? Are you as a leader constantly and honestly communicating with your team members? Do they feel safe to come to you with problems or concerns? You hired each employee for their specific skills and experience. Are you truly utilizing those skills? Have you invested in their progression? Think of a time you were assigned to a project or position different from the job you accepted. Maybe it was in a completely different field or discipline, and you were expected to magically become proficient in that skill without any formal training or guidance. Or perhaps you were assigned a project with no guidelines, deadlines, or parameters. Then, when you completed the project, you were castigated for not doing it correctly. Would it have been so hard for your boss to communicate his expectations along the way? Let's take that thought a bit further. Have you ever felt you were being underutilized or improperly utilized? If only you and your coworker could switch assignments, you would both be happier. But you don't feel comfortable going to management and expressing those thoughts and feelings. There is a 16% decrease in retention rates for employees who aren't comfortable giving upward feedback feedback. Multiple masters. As a leader, you still remember what it was like on the employee side. You can still draw on those negative experiences and feelings you had as an employee. Maybe that's why you decided to move up into leadership. You wanted to make a difference, to be the change you have always wanted, to be the leader you wished you had. Then reality hit. You actually don't have that much power. In fact, instead of serving one master, now you serve two. You are feeling pressure from your employees to do the things you always talked about, but you never realized how much pressure you would be receiving from corporate from your new boss. Marcus, I recall a new leader training I once attended. They brought in a senior corporate leader to give us a rousing welcome speech. Do you know what I remember from his message? He said, and I paraphrase, you're on our team now. It's us against them. Wait, what? I thought we were all on the same team. That's the old way of thinking. Us versus them. Management versus workers. Those are leaders who don't understand the new workforce paradigm. They come from a time when they, the bosses, ruled supreme. It was their company, and you were being paid to do do a job, so do it and don't forget to shut up. That doesn't work anymore. They aren't the only game in town. Employees will call their bluff and walk out looking for greener pastures. Then what? How is that leader going to continue building and creating without a workforce? The pressure you feel is real. It gnaws at you. You find yourself popping antacids like candy. You feel torn. You try to juggle your roles, protect your employees while keeping your boss happy, 
but no one can juggle forever. Eventually, your car runs out of gas and you are stuck in the middle of nowhere on the side of the road. The Shift Just as we expect our car to safely take us to our destination every time we turn the key, we want our team to accomplish their goals with unquestioned consistency. We want every part of the car to do its job, from the brakes to the sensors down to the wiper fluid. With the proper knowledge, diagnosis, and upkeep, it is 100% possible. You don't have to trade in your car every two years because you fear having to deal with repairs. With the proper upkeep and maintenance, you can create accurate expectations, make repairs when needed, and drive that car safely for 200,000 miles or more. With the proper balance of trust, communication, and action, you can create a workforce that is engaged and productive. Up until now, the CEO was always in the driver's seat. He would turn the key in the morning and expect us all to fire up and get to work. If a part broke down, he would replace it and move on. Employees were expendable, replaceable parts, but no more. Today, leaders must grow to understand that it is truly the employees who drive the company. Each part is vital for the company to operate at peak efficiency. With proper care and maintenance, the CEO, with your help, can make the company growl like a well-tuned muscle car or cruise over obstacles like a souped-up SUV. All right, folks, that's chapter one. So write down any questions that you may have with that, and you can leave those in the comments. And in the next couple of episodes, we'll actually walk through chapter one, answer your questions, and also go a little bit deeper into those topics. So thank you for listening. Please subscribe so you don't miss out when the next episode comes out. And we will see you next time on the Drive Formula podcast.